Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper left hand corner, we have So starting as the Teal Terran. Upper hand corner, we have Ball starting as the Dark... I wonder if he chooses that intentionally. Dark Blue Protoss. I'll leave it because it's good contrast. This is going to be on Vermeer once again. I've had some comments that people like the little anecdotes from life in between interspersed in the cast, so I'm happy to share them. The other things going on, I've got some turkey soup I've made for meal prep. I'm actually trying to figure out a fill-in meal prep thing. I inherited a uh, George Foreman grill from a lot from, I had a string, this is other side stories, I had a string of roommates that I was a part of where we occupied this ha this kind of college house for, uh, I think it was like 15 years. It was roommates meeting new people and then bringing them into the fold and then handing it off to the next generation or whatever. I was at the latter end of that, unfortunately, when it <laughs> ended up collapsing. Uh, just had to find Craigslist people, and, and that was that. Uh, but inherited a George Foreman grill out of that. And that was back in the era when you cook things and, like, fat is bad. And fat isn't bad. Fat makes things tasty, so I might try something else. I was mostly using it as, like, a fast way to cook. I think I'm going to try it utilizing a grill. It was also handed out to me. But I'm trying to figure out things to meal prep uh, to be a little bit more... I've kind of hit a plateau as far as trying to get my body fat percentage down as I'm getting into my older age. Also to stay alive for my kid. Other considerations that happen and stresses. Uh, and, you know, just to be healthier and happier in general. Food has a big uh, effect on that. I will say fat is bad, sugar, or they, they say fat is bad. It's no longer the case anymore. Um, fat is good. Sugar is bad. So if you're gonna mess around with sugar, my recommendation is is like go all out, get mead, because uh, mead is delicious, uh, delicious and sugary and alcoholic, and so you can get the ma the full impact all at once and make sure it's like an actual delight. Another shout out to my mead dealer. Hope he's feeling better. Uh, anyway, into the game. It looks like we have barracks with refinery three SCV wandering into that gas. So it looks like it isn't going to be the one racks into expand. Maybe hoping for the option of aggression just in case Ball was going to go for that 12th hatchery or 12th hatchery, 12 Nexus. Gateway is up, Cybernetics Core. No Zealot to start, so wanting to get Dragoons out sooner rather than later. And unfortunately, oftentimes the hope for that, I think, is to make sure that your opponent loses initial scouting information with first scout so able to get the information he was looking for. Looks like that probe making bottom right for Ball, so if it continues along the, the path, it could end up scouting so last. I'm hoping what he does is once he finds nothing bottom right, he immediately goes catty corner upper left, realizing that SCV ended up in his base fairly rapidly. Dragoon being produced, range also being upgraded. Do you have an initial factory? Only a single SCV in gas, so we'll see if it's another vulture into expand style of thing. It's kind of, it, way back in the day, it was always machine shop into expand. These days, seems to be the three marines to deal with any sort of initial dragoon pressure bunker and then initial vulture to apply counter pressure that is the uh, build du jour pro is going caddy corner unfortunately outside of these three marines is going to get a lot of scouting otherwise and the other pro the other advantage of going for this three marine build is if you hide your marine count if you start building additional marines back here you could be going for a push so your protoss opponent if they're playing safe should drop additional gateways, and but it looks like instead a Nexus being grabbed from Ball, he's just assuming that this is going to go into expand right here. So migrating that Vulture out, the Dragoon is fielding forward. There's a second Dragoon to drop its place, Pylon on the low ground, an SCV wandering up to get some additional information. With that single Dragoon, I don't know that it's going to be sufficient to block out that SCV, but certainly able to see the Nexus and is going to be able to scoot in. That was huge. And is going to be able to scoot in and see that there's no additional gateway as of yet, which suggests there's going to be a faster robotics. Also, you can see that cybernetics core spinning. So Ball saving resources, usually that indicates we're going to see ro a Robo. There's the Robo plop down now. But on top of that, with the Dragoon out of position, this does leave that natural expansion potentially a little bit exposed. Oh, and Ball dropping the ball. But I'm bump bad pun. And the Dragoon taking a lot of base damage to those Marines out front before backing off. Three Marines do kill a Dragoon. Does cost a couple lives. SCV now battling it out versus that probe. It looks like that SCV is the winner. Gets the kill. Second gateway. And so So now with a huge amount of late game information saw, I assume through that latent bit of vision that was left over, the two gateways, the robotics facility, so he knows it's going to be a three gate robo follow. 
Although, I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, he needs to pull that siege tank back. The vulture nearby, mine's just finishing, so he can go ahead and get mine plantage. And I'm wondering if, also with this, if he's going to plant a mine towards that 12 o'clock location so he can see uh, if there's a, a shuttle or something along those lines to follow it up. But right now, it was looking very similar to game one. Speed being upgraded, so delayed on siege tech. Armory being upgraded as well. Engineering bay. Uh, army for plus one weapons. Barracks has not yet landed to provide that additional blockade field as of yet. I like this mine because it kind of does double coverage. It's one that you can spot whether Protoss are grabbing an earlier base, and yeah, the mines can also see uh, if the shuttle gets produced coming across that edge, deny a bit of that information. Observatory providing some additional blockade on the front. No second gas as of yet for Ball. I take that back. There's a second gas for Ball. Citadel of Adun, so looking very similar to game one. I think Ball is once again going to try to play Gateway Man, but he's doing so on about an even worker count. One advantage for him is where So might have wanted to try to play a more comfortable, let's grab the third expansion uh, in the darkness. I'll go ahead and do a quick map reveal. Uh, grab it up here where it's a little bit more defensible with the siege tanks. He might feel a little bit less inclined to do so, knowing that his opponent is upper right. Observer making its way down. Ball going to go ahead. And I think it's, it saw the probe on its way across, but this is a big indicator that it's going to be a quick third. The vultures have an opportunity to s sneak in and maybe halt that. Almost. Not able to stop the Nexus, but that was very, very close. The Dragoon needs to be careful that it doesn't wander too far out. Yeah. And eat some mine damage. I also like the engineering bay placement from So. Very wise up in that corner. That is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to get rid of that. There we go. So, supply counts, about even at this stage, three gateways up, Templar Archives and Stargate, so it's going to be very quick, three base Arbiter. I like the timing of that, second refinery being grabbed. Starport with a second factory, this is very light on the factory style, so I would not be shocked to see a command center being built to float out for so. I do want to mention, in game one, it felt like that siege tank count was rather low. The Observer not able to sneak in this time. The, the siege tank count was rather low uh, for so overall. And I'm wondering if that will be the case again in the mid game. And that, especially with the fast Arbiter tech, solid stasis can wreck an entire Terran's game, especially if they've got those siege tanks bunched up at lower numbers. So peeking forward a little bit to get that turret placed. And again, this is Playing with just... Okay, so now getting a science facility. Interesting play here. So why don't you make sure he's got everything in place for the upgrades. Playing a little bit lower on the factory count. I'm wondering if he's going to tack on additional factory here. Or if he's just waiting. To He's floating enough minerals to either place two factories or get that command center. There he goes. Starting to wander out to grab that command center. So going to try to play it off three bases. Get the upgrades. Play from there. Once again, has the worker lead overall. Slight supply lead. Army count, just about even behind this. Ball saturating across three. Arbiter in production. Hopefully stasis will get upgraded. A little bit light on the gateway count to follow. Let's see if Ball does a little bit of a better job this time. Game one, he kept that worker count very, very low through large stages of that match, and it really cost him, particularly moving into that late game portion. But right now, doing a solid job clearing those mines out. Wondering if he's going to try to play towards a quick fourth or if he is going to play a little bit, wait for that Arbiter out, play a little bit more aggressive from there. He is playing a little bit lighter as far as the number of gateways and that sneaky mine might even be able to spot a quick fourth. If ball, this would be a very dangerous take because you're expanding into your Terran opponent, which is always scary. Dropship out, a couple vultures in it. Th this would be absolutely devastating if it dropped along this corner. There's a single photon cannon but if vultures went all the way around, there, I don't know, there's some opportunity. Also, if they drop in the main, can see both the tech and get a lot of probe kills there. Worker counts even, supply even, which usually puts Terran ahead. Plus one weapons up and running in that third base now saturating for ball, or sorry, for so, which means economically they are, the Terran is ahead. And I don't see any movements from ball as of yet. To start grabbing a fourth base. Just going to ramp up, get those troops out. First Arbiter 
Going to come out along that corner of the observer. Oh, just out of position to see this dropship coming from that right-hand side. Maybe just tacking on top of that mine. The cannon, going to be able to get some pot shots, so going to be an early warning system there. The Arbiter making its way back across. And fortunately for Ball, his SimCity is such that the Vultures can't get... Well, they're going to try to attack from the high ground, it looks like. But having trouble doing so as Zealots are right on top of them, and they're pinned into the wall. So... I'm not sure if I want to call that an intentional amazing defense there by Ball, but the SimCity to the south and the low drop point meant so it really didn't get anything out of that drop. Mines cleared to the south. Bases are humming. Despite all this, Ball managing to sneak up. Looks like a good solid supply chunk, which is what he wants at the late stage. You can see a bunch of supply depots and things trying to make it difficult for recalls in that upper right-hand corner. No mines towards that corner as of yet. The Arbiter staging up on the northern spoke to provide some defense. Ball going to go ahead, feeling some map control, potentially grab that 3 o'clock location. So just working his way towards the upgrades, tacking on a whole bunch of factories behind this. Just going to stick to the two machine shops here. Army there, army there for plus two, plus one armor. I think if I if my commentator senses on, this will finish around the 13-ish. Late 12 minute mark. We will see. And we'll see if So wants to make movements from there. Or if he just wants to expand into Ball. It's going to be challenging deciding what additional base to take for both players. Next is coming online at the 3 o'clock. Bit of combat flurries for So to get to size up his enemy. Two Arbiters out now. This Arbiter has, also, uh, has a good stasis amount of energy to work with. And these siege tanks. So if, these, if this stasis happens right here and these mines get cleared, that could be a dead third base because there's a pretty good SimCity. I like the SimCity from So right here, but I don't know that these two siege tanks would be able to repel an entire Protoss army, particularly if there's nice blue crystal along that particular edge. have to keep that in mind down the, down the line. Some vultures wandering out to get some mine coverage out on the map. Plus one weapons is there for Ball. Plus two weapons working on the way. Second Arbiter going to join the grouping at that northern spoke. I'm wondering if Recall... So Energy's been researched. I don't know if Recall's been researched. Zealot just going to face plant its way across. I'm also curious if this Arbiter's moving out for scouting purposes. Vulture's checking that bottom left. Some mines over to that direction. Not a. We do have three cans to go ahead and blockade. It's going to be a challenge to get probes down there bottom right for so. Plus two weapons now online. Vulture's going to back out, though, upon seeing literally nothing to attack. Nice escort here, though. With those Dragoons. So, so just a little bit too early to be able to engage that. That he's going to put Ball at four bases and a theoretical economic lead. However, plus the mighty plus two weapons, plus one armor is there. And it looks like so staging up to go ahead and grab his nine o'clock base. And now, I'm curious, I want to wait for this to finish to see whether there's going to be an Arbiter follow-up. Still, the probe count a little bit light for Ball for four bases at the 50 workers. Hasn't moved up to the 40 workers. One Arbiter staging to the north. Some attack troops moving forward as So starting to take some forward position as well. So just now sieging up, a single Zealot there, Ball backing off. Arbiter rejoining. The attack grouping. Ball has to be very, very careful if he does go for a recall that sometimes you'll end up recalling to your opponent's base and that strands the army you needed to defend your front. I feel like it's better just to use it in stasis. SEV able to walk to the ground and grab that 9 o'clock. Ball still made no motions to grab any additional territory. Arbiter wandering up with no... And ooh, that is not a great stasis. Second Arbiter moving up will have an opportunity to drop some better... Stasis. Pretty good spread by So to negate a little bit of that. Did he? And that second Arbiter got EMP'd. Oof. So So should be able to hold this territory without too much trouble. Ball might want to think about grabbing some additional expansion somewhere behind this. As So is making no motions to move forward. It looks like he's just in a defensive posture to hold that 9 o'clock and his additional holdings. 
Arbiter getting wiped out. Not seeing recall being researched behind us, so I gotta assume that it's already been researched and I just missed it in between here. But with a complete lack of energy and down on upgrades, Ball not looking to engage so particularly mid-map where there's just a lot of infrastructure, this would have been a good stasis opportunity. Both players just carving out respective side of the map. Ball actually with a pretty sizable bank advantage. There we go. Pretty decent stasis. Although not following up with an attack to have much of a threat and the Arbiter just dying in open field. EMP on the second Arbiter to follow up, so it's not going to have a lot of energy, but is going to be able to retreat otherwise. And now Ball moving forward. The Zealots going to get completely wiped out by that minefield, exposing the Dragoons to the Siege Tanks. The Vulture's right there to pin a lot of it back. Not a lot of Siege Tanks engage. It's going to be mostly Vulture fights from the right. I expect the first line of Siege Tanks to get wiped out. The stasis should uncrystallize in not too long and allow So to hold this. I think Ball knows it, so he's going to go ahead and take a walk back. Now down on supply. His main is just about to mine out. Natural expansion still looks good, so it's going to be three base versus uh, three base shortly. Briefly checking the north with the Zealot and wipe that there. It was a pretty solid Arbiter count for Ball, but not able to get anything accomplished with it. Zealots escorting this probe to the bottom right. Ball wanting to go ahead and start establishing territory there. It feels like this is coming somewhat late, however. At the very least, it's not going to be under Vulture fire. Vulture is meandering into that northern spoke and being escorted away by Dragoons. And I don't know that this is enough of an attack force to stop these Vultures from being able to wipe out this probe. So the probe, yeah, dropping that Nexus in a hurry. And a pylon. Oh, is he going to try to double Nexus? Might even try to just wander up and let... Yeah, let So see it. And deal with whatever he can. It looks like some more vultures streaming that direction. Some Zealots and Dragoons making their way to provide some support. Fortunately, Zealots... They'll be able to clear mines, but I don't know that they're going to be able to provide a lot other support. A big dedication of troops. Ball needs to be careful he doesn't over-dedicate troops to the bottom right and open up So an opportunity to walk right to the natural expansion, but right now, so down on supply in comparison to Ball. The Vulture's trying to focus down that Nexus to allow late-game economic leads, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. These four Dragoons going to be plenty to clear out what's left. So able to establish everything in the bottom right. A cannon needs to get dropped here to clear that mine to allow an additional base grab. Arbiter staging up to maybe go for a recall. Pretty well plugged up here at the main and most of the factory line to the south. Here it comes. Missed it on the minimap right there. Ooh, and a big EMP hits plus a lot of turrets. Double EMP just to be sure. So nothing happening there. Nothing happening. But so, very comfortable sitting on the bases. Continue, can continue to work those upgrades. Plus three weapons on the way. And I assume plus two armor as well. Getting some more science vessels out. Now, actually, the EMPs have been really on point for so as well. Whenever a single Arbiter's managed to get in a stasis, the follow-up have just been absolutely obliterated by uh, EMPs, really negating having that those really important spellcaster units in the mid-game. So starting to make movements ahead of Weapons 3 towards that northern spoke. EMP on those four Dragoons to lighten them up, and this is a big Siege Shank line. So unlike game one, massive amount of Siege Shanks here. However, So may be overstepping his bounds because coming from that high ground spoke, even without the EMP, the Dragoon's able to get on top of a lot of that. So a lot of the Siege Shanks getting wiped out. The Siege Shank count getting reset back down to six. Three more coming up. So So still can continue to push this. Making his way forward. I'm not sure if So is aiming to go ahead and grab that 12 o'clock or if he's going for a killing maneuver to seal in that natural expansion. Holding that northern spoke with that SCV, at least in believe he just wants to grab that 12. Zealots evacuating that 12 o'clock base as an SCV migrating in. So yeah, So just going to expand into his opponent. Honestly, he could probably do both at once. Nexus now being built bottom right hand corner. Behind this. Ball with a slight supply lead. Looking at plus one weapons, it's a ways off finishing. But Ball needs to start evicting these forces back because this is a hop, skip, and a jump from that natural expansion. EMP on the science vessels. 
but no troops underneath to follow this up. So this is this is the defenses to prevent an attack on that natural expansion. A good, a good stasis behind this. The army starting to move forward. The vultures late to get in front to blockade for the siege tanks. But it and the siege tanks very so has been fantastic at staggering these siege tanks out, leaving a handful of them unseaged to engage. So he's going to be able to push these forces back. And now Ball potentially in a lot of trouble. As that natural expansion, yes, he has some gateway. Well, he's got a good amount of gateways to bottom right, so might be able to create a flank. But at the moment, light on resources. Again, he's still sitting at that 50 supply count, and so starting to stage up, and yeah, blockade him in. Troops coming from the south, so Ball's going to have to get a really fantastic two-pronged attack. Fortunately for him, the ba so the natural expansion doesn't have a lot of resources left. The third doesn't have a lot of resources left either. But there's a lot of tech to protect otherwise. Some troops making their way bottom right to go ahead and mine off potential reinforcement. Siege tanks moving in to attack that third. Dragoons should easily be able to engage and clear that out. So has grabbed that 12 o'clock base, but not yet saturated as well. Zealots on top of the Goliaths and at least able to push a lot of those attack forces off his third. Staging up another attack force to engage mines in the way. Another good stasis on the rear, though. And it looks like so, yeah, just overextending a little bit with that attack to the right, splitting up that attack force. So instead of having concentrated ball, huh, no pun intended, ball able to break a little bit of that forward siege line. And I think with the reinforcements... Might be able to press forward. It looks like he split off a secondary attack force to maybe wipe out these bases bottom right. A lot of Dragoon blood left over. And unfortunately, I don't know that Ball can reinforce from the north here as he's plugged in. But if he's patient with it, he might be able to stage some attack troops and at least save that low ground natural expansion. So starting to take control of the match, 30 supply ahead. A lot of that is in workers. The Zealots able to do some mind drags and clear out a few of the siege tanks to the north, so some reinforcements might be able to come from that direction. Unfortunately, Ball not able to get the attack forces into the bottom right he was looking for. So the probes having to flee might end up losing that natural, could possibly lose that bottom right hand base. And so reinforcing vultures to go ahead and mine and clear out. So Ball has completely lost map control at this stage. Lost that natural bottom right. An Arbiter trying to attack overhead. That is the sole defense in this bottom right-hand base as troops starting to gather up to maybe stave off an encroachment across that base that's leaving this 3 o'clock base also very, very exposed. Some vultures have managed to sneak. Oh, that was maybe an overstretch, sneaking all the way into the main there. Ball once again re-engaging some zealots. Looks like to pour out and clear out that natural expansion. Another EMP landing but not catching a lot of those forward troops. More siege tanks moving forward. So, so holding that bottom right. The vulture is moving that direction. It looks like an Arbiter is fooling for chasing a siege tank mid-map instead of just attacking everything to that location. Some defense matrix. So, so holding a bit of a skeleton crew here, but has managed to at least threaten that location. If he just moves this up north to the 3 o'clock, though, or reinforces here, I don't know that there's a lot that Ball will be able to do in this match, as far as a follow-up, also Goliath might be necessary to deal with these latent Arbiters that have been out in the field. The Dragoons moving back down, clearing the mines at the Naturals. So in theory, Ball could re-grab that location. The Arbiter now trying to re-engage. Stasis seeing two siege tanks to slow this attack. That might open up the defenses to move up and clear that attack here. So, so overextending a little bit now with his aggression, allowing Ball to sneak back into this. But Ball, at the moment, sub-40 workers which hurts, so is expanded to the bottom left. He just needs to macro up, has a sizable supply lead still. Level three weapons, level two armor as well to work with. It looks like he's abandoned the contain at the natural. So Ball at least lives another day. And if he can get some probe saturation back at, the, at his various bases, might be able to work his way back into this. So starting to move units out across the map probes transferring to get active the vultures looks like they're going to go ahead and reinforce so they're going to miss that transfer more siege tanks moving up for so to the natural expansion big emp 
Oh, those Goliaths, and this is a huge amount of siege tanks. So I'm not expecting these Dragoons behind us to last very long. Looks like a single Zealot made it to the front, so we're going to be able to at least clear out a single siege tank. Probes successfully making it bottom right. So finally saturating, it looks like that 12 o'clock base, but he hasn't grabbed that gas as of yet. He's hurting for minerals right this second. And starting to grab, it looks like the expansion bottom left. Arbiter is now eating some of that Goliath fire. Good stasis to clear some of them out. And with that science vessel there, yeah, re relying on ComSat to clear what, what's underneath. Arbiter wiped out. More reinforcements coming from the north, but there, there's that siege tank that's still there along that left. But so much stasis is going to negate a lot of this. So Ball might be able to clear out the rest of this army. Although with the follow-up, he might want to just leave the crystallized units be because he doesn't have enough to clear out what's remaining. Leaving two siege tanks there for the moment. Looks like some dragoons have found this expansion bottom left and are attacking there. That's distracting so enough where he's going to send some vultures and goliaths to go ahead and engage. Command it's continuing to build SCVs at location. Some SCVs also being transferred to that 12 o'clock to get that saturated. Few troops there that unfortunately arriving a little bit too late. Kind of chaos on both sides of the map all over the place. So, establishing the bottom left, chasing a Dragoon into the main, should be able to grab that, or sorry, yeah, so should be able to grab that without too much trouble. Ball still hasn't re-grabbed his natural expansion bottom right. Both players really hurting for minerals right now. But a big supply lead for So overall. Huge supply lead. And I don't know that there's a lot that Ball can do about it. He's still mining, he's basically mining on two bases versus two. He's down upgrades. Pretty good mine coverage and also territorial control as far as engagement points feels a lot like it's in So's favor. He's creating the walls for Ball to run into at multiple locations. And So doesn't need to attack into Ball right here. It's really up to Ball, especially with the bottom, the bases being capped in the bottom left. It's up to Ball to slow So down. Minerals starting to surge back in for him with those 77 workers and looking for a transfer of SCVs to the bottom left from one of these locations. But I, that SC has been idle for quite a while. He's a lazy guy. I don't, this isn't me uh, criticizing Ball or uh, So at all. It's just I'm criticizing that SCV for being so lazy. Like, do your job, man. You knew what you were getting into when you signed up for this army. Another attack for So, bottom right. You're gonna be harvesting those minerals day in, day out. Actually, I'm wondering if uh, SCVs are like, uh, they're just the prisoners or just the guys that, never mind. I won't get into that. So clearing out bottom right, there is a troop grouping that wants to sweep down into this. The Vulture is providing some nice blockade, though, to allow those siege tanks to do their work. Science Vessel can spot absolutely everything. Not sure that's necessary for So to even attack. Goliath's moving out too far forward with that observer, and you can just see the trail of blood as reinforcements might have tried to make their way back across. Vulture is now able to get in the main. They are outnumbered by the siege tank dragoons and whatnot, but some mines planted are going to be able to clear out the rest of the attack force, and reinforcements for so making it there. Some dragoons, just a skeleton crew of a reinforcing group, trying to make its way out. The Arbiter might win that fight versus this Goliath. It's going to be close. Nope, does not win the fight. Some observers getting picked off as well. Which will make... Yeah, and there's GG. Ball calls it. Gives it to So. He's going to move on to the round of 16. That's unfortunate. I kind of wanted Ball to advance. Long macro match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Regardless, thank you for listening.